my necessaries have embarked. Farewell. <laughs> <laughs> so, sister, as the winds give benefit and a convoy is assistant, do not sleep, but let me hear from you. <laughs> Do you doubt that? Well, for Hamlet and the trifling of his favours, hold it a fashion, a, a toy in blood, a violet on the rose of creamy nature, sweet, not lasting, froward, not permanent, suppliant of a minute, no more. No more but so? Well, think it not. For nature's present does not grow in thews and bulks, but when its temple waxes, the inward service of the mind and soul grows wide with all. Perhaps he says he loves you, and now no soil nor cordial doth besmirch the virtue of your will, but if he says he loves you, and it fits your wisdom to believe it, then feel what weight your honour may sustain, if with too credent ear you list his songs. Or, Lose your heart or, or your chaste treasure open to his unmastered opportunity. Fear it, Ophelia. Fear it, dear sister. And keep within the rear of your affections out of the danger and dread of desire. Virtue itself escapes not calumnious strokes. And in the morning and liquid dew of youth, contagious blastments are imminent. But be wary. Best safety lies in fear. Virtue itself rebels when none else near. I shall the effect of this good lesson keep as watchman to my heart. But, good my brother, do not as some ungracious pastors do, show me the steep and thorny way to heaven, whilst himself, like a puffed and reckless libertine, himself the primrose path of dalliance tread, oh, and wrecks not his own reed. Oh, fear me not. <laughs> I stay too long. Now here our father comes. A double blessing is a double grace. Fortune itself smiles on a second meeting. <laughs> Yet here, Laertes, aboard, aboard, for shame. The wind sits in the shoulder of your sail, and you are stayed for there. My blessings with you, and these few precepts in thy memory, see thou character. Give thy thoughts no tongue, nor any unproportioned thought his act. Be thou familiar, but by no means vulgar. What friends thou hast, and their adoption tried, grapple them to thy soul with hoops of steel. But do not dull thy palm with entertainment of each new-hatched, unfledged comrade. Beware of entrance to a quarrel, but being in it, bear that the opposed beware of thee. Give every man thine ear, but few thy voice. Take each man's censure, but reserve thy judgment. Costly thy habit as thy purse can buy, but not expressed in fancy. Rich, not gaudy. For the apparel oft proclaims the man, and they in France of the best rank and station are our most select and generous chief in that. Neither a borrower nor a lender be, for the loan oft loses both itself and friend, and borrowing dulls the edge of husbandry. <coughs> This above all, <coughs> to thine own self be true, and it must follow as the night the day thou cannot then be false to any man. Farewell. My blessing season this in thee. I most humbly take my leave, my lord. The time awaits. Go, your life attends. 
Farewell, sister. And remember well what I have told you here today. Tis in my memory locked, and you yourself shall keep the key of it. What is't, Ophelia, he hath said to you? So please you, something touching the Lord Hamlet. Mary, well bethought. Tis told me he hath very oft of late given private time to you. And you yourself have of your presence been most free and bounteous. If it be so, as so tis put on me, and that in way of caution I must tell you. You do not understand yourself so clearly as behoves my daughter and your honor. What is between you? Give me up the truth. My lord, he hath of late made many tenders of his affection to me. Affection? Huh. You speak like a green girl unsifted in such perilous circumstance. Do you believe his tenders, as you call them? <coughs> I do not know, my lord, what I should think. Mary, I'll teach you. Think yourself a baby who hath taken his tenders for true pay, which are not sterling. Tender yourself more clearly, or you will tender me a fool. My lord, he hath importuned me with love in honorable fashion. Fashion, you call it? Go to, go to. And hath given countenance to his speech with almost all the vows of heaven. I know when the blood boils how prodigal the soul lends the tongue vows. These blazes, daughter, giving more light than heat, extinct in both, even in the promise as it is a-making, you must not take for fire <clears throat> from this time, daughter. Be somewhat scanter of thy maiden presence. Set your entreatments at a higher rate than a command to parley. For Lord Hamlet believes so much in him that he is young, and with a larger tether may he walk than may be given you. In few, Ophelia, do not believe his vows, for they are brokers not of that die which their investments show, but mere implorators of unholy suits, breathing like sanctified and pious bawds, the better to beguile. This is for all. I would not in plain terms have you from this time forward give one moment pleasure to Lord Hamlet. Look to it, I charge you. Come your ways. I shall obey, my lord. Ophelia, what's the matter? Alas, my lord, I have been so affrighted. With what in the name of heaven? My lord, as I was sewing in my chamber, Lord Hamlet, with his doublet all embraced, no hat upon his head, his stockings fouled, unguarded, and down jibed to his ankle, pale as his shirt, his knees knocking each other, and with a look so piteous in purport, as if he'd been loosed out of hell to speak of horrors. He comes before me. Oh, mad for thy love. I do not know, my lord, but truly I do fear it. What said he? He, he took me by the wrist and held me hard. And then goes he to the length of all his arm. And with his other hand thus o'er his brow, fell to such perusal of 
of my face as he would draw it. Long stayed he so. At last a little shaking of mine arm and thrice his head waving up and down he raised a sigh so piteous and profound as it did seem to shatter all his bulk and end his being. <clears throat> this done, he lets me go. And with his head over his shoulder turned, he seemed to find his way without his eyes. For out of doors he went without their help. And to the last, bended their light on me. Come with me. This is the very ecstasy of love, whose violent property fordoes itself and leads the will to desperate undertakings as oft as any passion under heaven that doth afflict our nature. I am sorry. What, have you given him any hard words of late? No, my good lord. But as you did command, I did repel his fetters and denied his access to me. That hath made him mad. I am sorry that with better speed and judgment I had not quoted him. Ah, it seems that I, I did but fear he did but meant to brew thee, but beshrew my jealousy. It seems it is as proper to our age to cast beyond ourselves and our opinions as it is common to the younger sort to lack discretion. Go with me. <clears throat> this must be known, which being kept close might lead more grief to hide than hate to utter love. And can you, by no drift of circumstance, get from him why he puts on this confusion, writing so harshly? with all his quiet days in turbulent and dangerous lunacy. He does confess he feels himself distracted, but from what cause he will by no means speak. Nor do we find him forward to be sounded, but uh, we will bring him to some confession of his true state. Did he receive you well? Oh, most like a gentleman, but with much forcing of his disposition. Negative question, but of our demands, most free in his reply. Did you assay him of any pastime? Madam. It so fell out that certain players we overwrought on the way. Of these did we tell him, and there did seem in him a kind of joy to hear of it. They are about the court, and, as I think, have already order this night to play before him. Tis very true, and he did beseech me to entreat your majesties to hear and see the matter. With all my heart, it doth much content me to hear him so inclined. Good gentlemen, Give him a further edge, and drive his purpose on in these delights. We shall, my lord. <laughs> Sweet Gertrude, leave us too. For we have closely brought for Hamlet hither, that he, as twere by accident, may hear affront Ophelia. Her father and myself, lawful despisers, shall so bestow ourselves that, seeming unseen, we may of their encounter freely judge and gather by him as he so behaves, if it be the affliction of his love that thus he suffers for. I will obey. And for your part, Ophelia, I do wish that your good beauties be the happy cause of Hamlet's wildness. So shall I hope that your virtue will return him to his wanted ways for both your honors. Madam, I wish it may. Ophelia, walk you here. My lord, we will bestow us. Read on this book that such a show of exercise may color your loneliness. I hear him coming. Let's withdraw, my lord.
To be or not to be? <laughs> that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing end them. To die, to sleep no more, and by a sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. For it is a consummation devoutly to be wished, to die, to sleep. But to sleep, perchance, to dream. Aye, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. But there's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time? The oppressor's wrong. The proud man's contumely, the pangs of disprised love, the law's delay, the insolence of office, and the spurns that patient merit of the unworthy takes, which he himself might his quietest make with a bare bodkin. And who would these fardels bear? To grunt and sweat under a weary life, but that the dread of something after death, the undiscovered country from whose born no traveller returns, puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those ills that we have than fly to others that we know not of. And thus conscience does make cowards of us all, and thus the native hue of resolution sickly all oh, with a pale cast of thought and enterprises of great pith and moment. With this regard their currents turn away and lose the name of action. My lord, I have remembrances of yours that I have longed long to re-deliver. I pray you now receive them. No. No, I, I never gave you all. My honored lord, I know right well you did. And with them words of so sweet breath composed as made the things more rich. Their perfume lost. Take these again. For to the noble mind, rich gifts wax poor when givers prove unkind. Are you honest? My lord. But are you fair? What means your lordship? That if you be honest and fair, your honesty should admit no discourse to your beauty. <laughs> Could beauty, my lord, have better commerce than with honesty? Aye, truly. The power of beauty will sooner transform honesty from what it is to a board than the force of honesty can translate beauty into his likeness. Uh, this was sometime a paradox, but now the time gives it proof. I did love you once. Indeed, my lord, you made me believe so. <laughs> you should not have believed me. I loved you not. I was the more deceived. Get thee to a nunnery. And why wouldst thou be a breeder of sinners? But I am myself indifferent, honest. For I could accuse me of such things that it were better my mother had not borne me. I am very proud, revengeful, ambitious, with more offenses at my beck than I have thoughts to put them in, imagination to give them shape or time to act them in. But what should such fellows as I do, crawling between earth and heaven? We are arrant knaves, all, believe none of us. To a nunnery, go. Where is your father? At home, my lord. <clears throat> Let the doors be shut upon him, that he may play the fool nowhere but in his own house. Farewell. Help him, you sweet heavens. Ooh, if thou dost marry. I'll give thee this plague for thy dowry. Be thou as chaste as ice, as pure as snow. Thou shalt not escape calumny. Get thy ways to a nunnery. Farewell. Or if thou wilt needs marry, marry a fool. For wise men know what monsters you make of them. To a nunnery. Go. Quickly to. Farewell. Oh, heavenly powers, restore him. 
I have heard of your paintings too well enough. God hath given you one face, and you make for yourself another. You jig, you amble, and you lisp, and you nickname God's creatures, and make your wantonness your ignorance. A go-to. I'll no more on it hath made me mad. I say we shall have no more marriages. Those that are already married, all but one shall live. The rest shall keep as they are. A two and nunnery. Go. Oh, what a noble mind is here o'erthrown! The expectancy and rose of the fair state, the glass of fashion and the mold of form, the observed of all observers, quite, quite down. And I of ladies most deject and wretched, that hath sucked the honey of his music vows, now see that noble and most sovereign reason, like sweet bells jangled out of tune and harsh, the unmatched form and feature of blown youth, blasted with ecstasy. Oh. Woe is me, to have seen what I have seen. See what I see. <laughs> His affection does not that way tend, nor what he spake, though lacked form a little, was not like madness. There is something in his soul o'er which his melancholy sits on bounds. And I do doubt that the hatch and disclosure will be some danger which to prevent. I have in quick determination thus set down. He shall with speed to England. It shall do well, and yet I do believe the origin and commencement of his griefs sprung from neglected love. How now, Ophelia, you need not tell us what Lord Hamlet said. We heard it all. My lord, do as you please, but if you see it fit, after the play, have his mother all alone and treat him to show his griefs. Have her be round with him, and if she find him not, to England send him, or confine him where your wisdom best shall think. It shall be so. Madness in great ones must not unwatched go. to the university, you said. I did indeed, my lord, and was accounted a good actor. Mm, and what did you enact? I enacted Julius Caesar. I was killed in the capital. Brutus killed me. It was a brute part of him to kill so capital a calf there. Be the players ready. Aye, my lord, we stay upon your patience. Come hither, good Hamlet, sit beside me. Nay, good mother, it is metal more attractive. Mark you that? Ah, oh, my lady, shall I lie in your lap? No, my lord. I meant my head upon your lap. Aye, my lord. But do you think I meant country matters? I think nothing, my lord. Mm, that's a fair thought to lie between maids' legs. What is, my lord? Nothing. You are merry, my lord. Who, I? I, my lord. What should a man do but be merry? And look you how cheerfully my mother looks. And my father died within <laughs> two hours. Nay, tis twice two months, my lord. So long. Nay, then, let the devil wear black. 
or I'll have a suit of sables. Oh, heavens. Died two months and not forgotten yet. And there's hope a great man's memory will outlive his life half a year. You are not. You are not. I'll mark the play. For us and for our tragedy, here stooping to your clemency, we beg your hearing patiently. Is this a prologue or the posy of a ring? Tis brief, my lord. Mm, as woman's love. For thirty times has Phoebe's cart gone round, Neptune sought watch and tell his orb ground, and thirty dozen moons with borrowed sheen, about the world times twelve thirties been. Since love our hearts, and Hymen did our hands, unite can mutual in most sacred bands. So many journeys may the sun and moon make us again count o'er ere love be done. But woe is me, you are so sick of late, so far from cheer and from your former state that I distrust you. Yet, though I distrust, discomfort you, my lord, it nothing must. For women's fear and love holds quantity in neither aught or in extremity. Now what my love is, proof hath made you know. And as my love is sized, my fear is so. Where love is great, the littlest doubts are fear. Where little fears grow great, great love grows there. Faith, I must leave thee, love, and shortly too, my opera and powers leave to do so. And thou shalt live behind in this fair world, honoured, beloved, haply one is a kind. For husband shall- Oh, confound the rest! Such love must needs be treason in my breast. In second husband, let me be accursed. None wed the second, but who killed the first. The instances that second marriage move are base respects of thrift, but none of love. A second time I kill my husband dead when second husband kisses me in bed. I do believe what now you speak, what we do determine, off we break. Purpose is but slave of memory, of Violent birth and poor validity, which now, like fruit, sticks to the tree unripe and fall unshaken when they mellow be. Most necessary that tis we forget to pay ourselves what to ourselves is debt, what to ourselves is passion we propose. Passion ending, don't the purpose lose. The violence of either grief or joy, the only natures of themselves destroy, where grief joys and joy griefs slender accident. The world is not for I, nor tis nor strange, that even our loved ones should with our fortunes change. For tis a question left us yet to answer, whether love lead fortune or fortune love. The great man down, you mark his favourite flies, the poor advance makes friends of enemies, and hither doth love and fortune tend, for who in wants shall never need a friend. And who and once a hollow friend doth try, directly seasons him his enemy. But orderly, to end where I begun, our wills and our fates do so contrary run, that our devices still are overthrown. Our thoughts are our own, there ends none of our own. So think now will no second husband wed, but die thy thoughts when thy first lord is dead. Nor ask to me give food, nor heaven light. Sport and repose lock from me day and night. To desperation turn my trust and hope, and anchor's cheer in prison be my scope. Each opposite that blanks the face of joy Meet what I would have well, and it destroy. Both here and hence, pursue me lasting strife. If once a widow, ever I be wife. If she should break it now. To steeply sworn. Sweet, leave me here a while. I fear my spirits grow fain, and I would beguile this tedious day with sleep. Sleep! Rock thy brain.
brain and never come mischance between us twain. Madam, how like you the play? She does protest too much, methinks. No, oh, but she'll keep her word. Have you the, uh, heard the argument? Is there an on it? No, no. They do but jest. They're poison in jest. No offence to the world. What call you the play? The mouse trap, and marry how tropically. The play is the image of a murder done in Vienna. Gonzago is the Duke's name, his wife Baptista. You shall see anon, tis a knavish piece of work, but what of that? We that have three souls, it touches us not. Ah, this is one Lucianus. Nephew to the king. You are a good chorus, my lord. I can interpret between you and your love, if I can see the puppet stallying. You are keen, my lord. You are keen. It would cost you a groaning to take off my edge. Uh, still better and worse. So you mistake your husband. Begin, murderer, and begin. Thoughts black. Hands act. Drugs fit and time agreeing. Confederate season, else no creature seeing. Thou mixed a rank of midnight weeds collected, with Hecate's ban thrice blasted, thrice infected. Thy natural magic and dire property on wholesome life usurp immediately. He poisons him in the garden for his estate. His name's Gonzago. You shall see anon. The story is extant and writ in choice Italian. Soon you will see how the murderer. That's the love of Gonzago's wife. The king rises. What? Frighted with false fire. How fares my lord? Give o'er the play. Away! Majesty. How now, Ophelia? How should I your true love know from another oh, one? Oh, alas, sweet lady, what imports this, this wrong? Say you? Nay, pray you mark. Nay, she is nay. dead and gone, lady. Nay, but Ophelia. She is dead and gone. Pray you, Mark. Alas, look here, my lord. How do you, pretty lady? Lord, we know what we are, but know not what we may be. Conceit upon her father. Pray you, let's have no words of this. Pretty Ophelia. Young men will do it, if they come to it. By cock, they are to blame. How long has she been thus? I hope all may be well. We must be patient. But I cannot choose but weep. To think they should lay him in the cold ground. My brother shall know of this. Oh, heat. Dry up my brains. Tears 
Seven no time must salt, dry up the sense and virtue from my eye. Oh heaven. My madness shall be paid in weight. Nature's fine in love. And where it is fine, it sends a precious instance of itself after the thing that it loves. There's rosemary. That's for remembrance. Pray, love. Remember. And pansies, that's for thought. A document in her madness, remembrance and thought fitted. There's fennel for you. And columbine. There's rue for you. Oh, uh, and here's some for me. We may call it Herb Grace a Sundays. You must wear your rue with a difference. There's a daisy. I would give you some violets, but they withered all when my father died. Thoughts, afflictions, passions, hell itself. And will he not come again? And will he not come again? No. No. He will never come again. <laughs>